Hello everyone, my name is Sarah and today we're going to be learning about the muscles of the face and neck. This is lab 17 in your anatomy 201 lab notebook. These muscles are actually super interesting to learn about because you'll be able to distinguish which muscles are used during certain face expressions. So let's get into the details and then we'll get started. So, as for any other lab that you have completed thus far in the semester, we are asking you to know one origin and one insertion for each of the following muscles listed on this slide. There's a total of six. In addition, I'll be saying an action for every single muscle that is labeled within this PowerPoint presentation, and that will help you to be able to distinguish what a synergist and an antagonist is for each of those labeled muscles. All right, let's get into it. So to start on this PowerPoint slide, we have the temporalis. So you can see it's the muscle above the ear. Um, its origin is the temporal fossa of the skull. Its insertion is the coronoid process of the mandible. And its action is to elevate and retract the mandible. So when the temporalis is engaged, it will close the mouth. So this assists in chewing or uh, what you will learn, the chewing loop. The occipitalis is the next muscle. It is on the posterior side of the head. Its action is to pull the scalp posteriorly. Between the occipitalis and the front talus is an uh, aponeurosis. So it's a band of flat tissue that goes along the scalp, so there's actually no muscle there. The frontalis is a muscle on obviously the frontal part of the head and it helps to elevate the eyebrows when it is contracted. Again on this slide you can see the temporalis muscle. Remember you need to know an origin and insertion as well as an action for this muscle. Um, as well as the lateral pterygoid and the medial pterygoid are labeled on this slide. Um, the pterygoids are muscles that are very deep within the face. They assist during chewing. The lateral pterygoid allows you to deviate your jaw from midline, while the medial pterygoid allows you to bring your jaw back to midline uh, during the chewing loop. So starting at the bottom of this slide, we have the masseter. It is labeled muscle 18 on this particular face model. It is used in mastication, which is also what? Chewing, yes. So for the masseter, the origin is the zygomatic arch. The insertion is the angle of the mandible, and its action is to close the mouth. As I said before, chewing. Above the masseter is the rosorius. This muscle is used to retract the mandible, so bring your chin closer towards your spine. We also have the zygomaticus major on the inferior portion of the face and the zygomaticus minor, which is superior to that. These muscles, when contracted, both assist in smiling. So as you can see, they're kind of connected to the corner of the mouth. So when you smile, brings the corner of your mouth posterior and superior. We also have the nasalis. This muscle helps to kind of wrinkle your nose and again the frontalis. On this slide we have a little better of a view of the zygomaticus minor and zygomaticus major. As you can see they are deep to orbicularis oris and they do connect at the corner of the lips or the corner of the mouth. All right, obicularis oris is another muscle that you need to know the origin insertion for. Um, it is a muscle that goes around the mouth. Its action is to close the mouth. It originates at the medial maxilla and mandible, and it inserts at the skin and muscle around the mouth. Little refresher here, you can again see the temporalis on the left side of this model and the orbicularis oris surrounding the mouth, again, that we just covered, and the orbicularis oculi, which is a new muscle in this slide. Um, its origin is the medial orbital margin, so that is kind of on the bridge of your nose area. Um, its insertion is all the tissue around the orbit or around your eye. Its action is to close the eye and pull the eyebrows medially. So when I say pull the eyebrows medially, that's to furrow your brow or to kind of look upset or angry. 
So on this slide, we also have the orbicularis oris and the masseter, which we have already covered. Remember, anything with an asterisk behind it, you need to know one origin, one insertion, and one action. All right, new muscles, we have the corrugator supercilii. This is a muscle deep to your eyebrow, and this helps to, um, again, pull your eyebrows medially. You have the levator labii superioris, and you have the depressor labii inferioris. So as you can see in the names, these muscles tell you what their actions are. Levator labii brings the lips upward. It helps to raise your upper lip. Depressor labii helps to depress your lower lip. And you also have the mentalis. Also, what we just covered was the obicularis oculi. A small note I'd like to make on this slide is the obicularis oculi and the obicularis oris are very unique muscles because they are circular. Um, there's not many of those in the body and those are two of them on the face. So now we're going to begin getting into the muscles of the neck. The first muscle is levator scapulae. This muscle in its name tells you what its action is. It elevates the scapula and allows you to shrug your shoulders. The sternocleidomastoid is probably the largest muscle within the neck. It begins near the occipital bone at the posterior side of the head and goes all the way to the sternoclavicular joint. Um, you can see the sternocleo, sternoclavicular, that's how that relates. Um, that joint is the joint between the sternum and the head of the clavicle. The sternocleomastoid, um, when both of them are contracted, as you have one on the right side of your neck and the left side of your neck, it allows you to flex your head or bring your chin towards your chest. The scalenes are the muscles labeled 100, 101, and 102 on this model. They originate at vertebra C1 through C5, so this is the cervical vertebra within your neck. They insert at ribs 1 and 2, so they actually go deep to the clavicle and insert on those two ribs. Um, the scalenes, again, you have these on both your left and right side of your neck, so when you contract them at the same time, they flex the neck and elevate the ribs during inhalation. So very important muscles for breathing. You also have the buccinator. Uh, this muscle is sort of on the mandible, and it allows for smiling as well. It also assists the smiling. And you have the risorius, as we covered before. All four muscles on this side are important for the chewing loop and for swallowing. The first two muscles, the mylohyoid, which is number 49 on the model, and the digastric, which is number 50 on the model, assist during swallowing by elevating the hyoid bone. The sternohyoid and the omohyoid, which are 20 and 21 on the model, assist in swallowing by depressing the hyoid bone after you have swallowed. We also have the sternohyoid labeled on this model as well, and deep to that muscle is the sternothyroid, which helps to depress the larynx during swallowing so you don't choke on your food. The sternocleomastoid, which we introduced in a previous slide, you need to know the origin and insertion for. It originates at the sternal head of the clavicle, and that is at the sternoclavicular joint and it inserts on the mastoid process, which is posterior to the ear, and it is a bone on the skull. And its action is to turn the head, and it flexes the head when you contract both of these muscles at the same time. On to the last muscle of lab 17. It is the platysma. It is a very broad and thin muscle. It helps during frowning by pulling the angle or the corner of the lips downward, and it also helps to depress the mandible, which allows you to open your mouth. All right, so that's everything for lab 17. Remember the six muscles that you need to know an origin, insertion, and action for. Those are the temporalis, the masseter, obicularis oris, obicularis oculi, sternocleomastoid, and the scalenes. In addition, make sure you know the action for at least one action for every muscle, and that's all.
Thank you.